So this is a PowerPoint about the public art master plan. In your packets, you have the full plan. So we're just going to go why um, public art is important for Moscow. We have some great scenes of downtown there. Um, a city enriched with public art and one that offers cultural amenities is a city that attracts business. The cultural ambience of a place is what draws people to a place where they would not otherwise go. Public art can be a highly cost-effective way to drive economic revitalization. 43,000 people surveyed from 26 cities ranked social offerings higher than education, safety, and local economy as a driver of attachment to a place. So we've done a couple uh, workshops on placemaking, and this goes back to placemaking and social offerings. Public art contributes positively to a community's social offerings. Why public art is important for Moscow. Does everybody recognize those images so you know where you are? Okay. Public art has the power to energize public spaces, promote community engagement, and transform everyday places into attractive and meaningful environments. Public art is part of a community's history. It reflects and reveals our society and adds meaning to our city. Public art is intended to attract attention and in doing so provides aesthetic beauty, cultural interpretation, education, inspiration, and general improvement to the urban environment. So let me go back here. Um, to the left is the wildflowers and that's off of Steiner uh, near the park. That's a bus shelter. Um, the vinyl art is on the corner across from Walgreens on Main and is at D or C Street? Yeah. And then to the right is Harold Blaze and that's our um, mural on the pool. Why a public art master plan? Um, Robin Olgram is here, our chair of the Arts Commission. This has been a goal of the commission for quite a few years. Remember, the 1% ordinance was passed in 2004. The public art guidelines was passed in 2012. And we're finally getting to the public art master plan. We formed a public art subcommittee of the Moscow Arts Commission, and that was chaired by Iris Mays, who is also here. We establish goals and objectives and articulate a 10-year community vision for public art within the city of Moscow. Serve to educate the community about the benefits and importance of public art. Document existing public art collection and serve as a guide for organizing and prioritizing future public art installations. So it's kind of like a road map. Identify capital and operational funding needs for a long-term sustainable public art program. So some of the contents of the plan, which by the way was organized by Becky Couch, who's in the audience too. So this plan was done in-house. This was not done by a consultant. This was done within community planning and development. So some of the contents of the plan uh, introduction, define public art, types of public art, purpose of the plan, community context, the history, the, our existing public art collection, vision, goals and objectives, public input process, recommended public art projects, and a lot of appendixes. So the process, this is where the MAC did all the legwork. Um, we developed questions for our citizen survey. We did a 2010 question, which was a preference for placement of public art in the community. What ranked high was the library, municipal buildings, city parks and trails, public walkways. Uh, in 2012, we asked the question, the preferred types of public art. This came back with murals, fountains, sculptures, functional art architecture, performance art, land art, monuments, banners, and posters. We held the cultural cafes. I think, Walter, you attended a cultural cafe in this room. Mm -hmm. um, we did des design thinking and placemaking workshop, and that was in April 2012. 
attended the farmer's market as the MAC in October and November, asking citizens what they thought of public art, and then had a cultural cafe and a bloom restaurant in January 2013. And these are sample photographs of the cultural cafe in this room. We also did another public input process with the opening of Linda Paul's um, photographic exhibit with the Farmer's Market, and that was March 5th, 2015. We had 20 to 30 attendees, and we sought input on the general plan contents, draft goals and objectives, locations, and the public preferred for installation of public art. Attendees placed stickers on boards and indicating, indicating their top three priority locations. And these are your maps. And this is potential public art locations and dots where people gave us their input. I think Jim Bolin gave us a couple stickers that night. So some of the goals and objectives, you have the transit center there with the sculptural pads on the left. You have another vinyl, um, vinyl art, and that's Julie Ewart. And then you have the bike rack in East City Park, and that's Nathaniel Ely. So upon review of public input, four major goals for public art in Moscow were developed. Each goal includes objectives intended to outline specific actions that will assist in achieving the goal. Goal one, increase public awareness and appreciation of public art and placemaking and the contribution of public art to the social, cultural, and economic well-being of the city. Objective one of one, develop a digital and print public art collection pamphlet for the purpose of guiding art tours and documenting public art installations to increase resident and visitor awareness and enjoyment of public art works in Moscow. One two would be to continue the arts events such as Art Walk to increase art and artist exposure, awareness and appreciation. And that brings me to Art Walk is next Friday, June 12th, and you'll have four new sculptures um, we vetted the sculptures. Iris was in the jury last week with the submissions, and those sculptures are going to be installed uh, between 8 and 9 on Thursday. So, um, another objective three, collaborate with the Chamber of Com Commerce to promote public art viewing opportunities within visitor information guides and materials. Expand opportunities for public involvement in all the arts. Goal number two, increase number of public art installations within the city. Establish a public art program to guide and cultivate at least one significant public art installation every two years. Number two is establish a public mural program. We got a lot of requests from businesses downtown wanting to do a mural installation. We have yet to draft that. Identify suitable mural installation locations, establish public mural standards, and pursue mural installations within Moscow. Number three, collaborate with community partners to initiate and coordinate public art projects. Identified community partners include, but are not limited to, the University of Idaho, and again, the Transit Center is a really good example of that. The installations that are going in on Thursday, three out of four are U of I students. The Chamber of Commerce, Heart of the Arts, local schools and businesses, and other similar organizations. Number four, develop policy for partnering with private developers to encourage public art installations within new and existing developments. Goal number three, increase funding for installation and care of public art within the city, increase the public art ordinance contribution amount from 1% to 1.25, or to provide additional funding to increase the number of new public art inst installations. Establish within the city's annual budget a public art program appropriation starting at 15000 to provide a consistent and reliable funding source for public art installations, curation, and program administration. Currently, the way the 1% is set up,
is when there is a capital project that the one percent um, adheres to money is collected our finance director Don Palmer administers the money but as you can see most of the public art was with the pool the Herc the new fire station so most of the money was generated with new construction of new um, buildings partner with the Moscow Urban Renewal Agency to increase the current public art tax increment revenue allocation from 1% to 2% to accelerate public art installations within the Urban Renewal District in Moscow. Goal number four, increase integrated art projects that are fully incorporated into the design of a larger project develop a formal public art component review process for all city projects subject to the public art ordinance including a defined review period to allow for the identification of public art integration opportunities without excessive project delays for two conduct training for city project planners designers managers and other relevant staff to increase awareness of public art integration opportunities within city projects so some of the recommended public art projects based on public input again the cultural cafes your citizen surveys the um, open house um, established goals and objectives four focus areas were identified where public art installations are desirable to the community downtown and legacy crossing city entrances entrances and this relates to the entryway beautification project city parks and pathways city and public facilities <coughs> downtown and legacy crossing um, the downtown streetscape project functional public art replacement and or installation the potential is there for 14 benches 30 trash receptacles 24 planters and 12 sculptural plinths to host rotating artworks Jackson and 6th integrated or sculptural southwest corner of the intersection city entrances the north city entry installation of medium sized sculpture at the north couplet near the intersection of main and C south artistic enhancements to existing bridge and pedestrian guardrails along the US 95 at the crossing of the south fork of the Palouse River Parks and Pathways, Berman Creekside, great location. We have the bus shelter with some um, wild flowers on the bus shelter, but great place for an installation along the pathway.